Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna to be building a $450 pre-built PC. And by building, I mean adding a graphics card. And guess what? It's another Dell Optiplex, but this one's a lot different than the other ones we've taken a look at in the past. But before we get into upgrading this Dell Optiplex, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? So as stated, this is a pre-built PC, as in we actually bought this PC used off of eBay, and it totally works right now. It's actually 100% ready to go. We're just gonna add a graphics card to get some better performance. So this is super easy for beginners and people who wanna do the really cheap DIY route, but if you wanna venture out and possibly go cheaper and do a custom build that looks really awesome, use the links in the script, or in the eye the top, I don't know, just look Wonderful. somewhere for them. Go to our channel and you're gonna find some really awesome builds. So how about we go ahead and open this thing up and talk a little bit more about what's inside and then show you how to upgrade this thing. It's super simple. All right, guys, this right here is a Dell Optiplex. More specifically, it's a Dell Optiplex that comes with an i7-6700, 16 gigs of RAM, and a hard drive in it. I think the hard drive is a one terabyte hard drive, so I mean, it's a hard drive, it's not gonna be great. You definitely wanna add an SSD to this thing if you do wanna spend more money on it, but it is well usable for uh, being able to get this thing up and running. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing, possibly, if I can. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and we're gonna look inside. As you can see right here, this is like the traditional like modern pre-built design nowadays, these kind of full tower cases that can support like a normal size graphics card. Um, they also come with like this little cage area for the hard drive and whatever two and a half inch drive you wanna install, that sort of deal. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this thing down and it looks pretty self-explanatory to upgrade a graphics card, but we might need to use some screws potentially. Well, it looks like the hard drive right here is a one terabyte Western Digital Blue, which is a basic hard drive, nothing too crazy about that. Still trying to figure out how to fully take this thing apart. It's a little bit different than some of the other pre builds we messed with. So give us a second, we're gonna find what we need to do here. Okay, so um, after looking at it very carefully, I just had to be a brute. I just gotta go, boom, there we go, it's open. Just rips the motherboard Just rips out. it out. But hey, here we go. We have two sticks of memory. This is 16 gigs of RAM, which is really awesome in a pre-built like this. Again, this whole system right here was $300. We will link you to this specific build in the description down below. It is an affiliate link to eBay, so do keep that in mind. Uh, but if the listing isn't there, you can probably generally find these around the same price. But anyways, for $300, you get that four core, eight threaded i7, 6700, which would be very on par with some modern like Ryzen 3 processors. Um, it would be more than enough to play games nowadays. Um, and yeah, the power supply looks pretty decent as well. It is an A plus bronze unit. The max power output is 240 watts. So you're not really gonna be able to put a high-end graphics card in here. But what we have right here is the Zotac GTX 1650, which does not require external power. Yes, you could get an adapter like a SATA power to six pin if you want to get something like a 1650 Super or anything like that. But we want to make sure this was going to work and not gamble on the fact that this power supply wasn't going to be good enough and go with something that well is basically the best card you can get that doesn't require external power but we'll always leave suggestions down below if you want to do some deal hunting and you can make this thing even cheaper down to 400 dollars if you get a used option like a 1050 ti or something like that so let's go ahead and open this thing and show you how to upgrade it all right here is our 1650 from zotac little cute card single fan card it's gonna be perfectly fine for this setup all you gotta do in this specific optiplex is you pull this little tab right here which will open up our pci lanes right here we'll specifically PCI slots, the lanes are basically the slots. But anyways, uh, what we're going to do is make sure that we line up this little bracket right here with the PCI slot right here, the blue one specifically. Normally we we'll need the topmost one because it is a 16X slot. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up and make sure where exactly it lines up so we can pop out these two middle ones, which is really simple. If you mess this up, you can always put these back in there. They're really easy to just slide back in and lock back into place. So we'll go ahead and get that set up right there and then go ahead line up our GPU like so, make sure the slot is good, and then firmly push down and make it lock into place. The best thing about these, they're toolless, so all you have to do is go ahead and latch this over and make sure it's, maybe? Is it really that janky where it just bends in like that? <laughs> I think it is. 
Okay, so now it's pretty much latched in. The GPU isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, and look, no six pin or any other external power required. So this thing is pretty much up and running and ready to go. One thing I did notice, this thing actually has an M.2 slot. So if you want to add an M.2 SSD, you could do that. That's actually really cool for a little pre-built system. But um, yeah, $450, this thing is ready to go. How about we go ahead and test some games real quick? All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this PC all ready to benchmark, let's talk about those benchmarks, shall we? First up, we decided to test this PC in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, more specifically Warzone, and we got, well, really good results. We did test this on medium high settings, which most people will probably run on a mixture of high low settings to get the pro settings results, but we were getting over 60 FPS most of the time. There are a few dips down below into the 50s, which was kind of concerning, but again, we're running on medium high settings, so we dropped those settings down just a little bit to medium or even medium low, you can get closer to like the 70-ish, 80-ish FPS average and not have to worry about it dipping below 60, which is very impressive for a $450 PC. Call of Duty Warzone is definitely no easy game to run, and there's some higher-end PCs that have some stuttering issues here and there with this game, so I was very impressed, especially in the 50v50 mode that they have right now, Warzone Rumble. Uh, this is probably going to be even more demanding than the main game itself, so very impressive showing from this PC. One thing you will see throughout the rest of these benchmarks is that the 1650 is most likely going to be the bottleneck in this situation, but we kind of knew that going in. The 1650, while be it a great card for not requiring external power, does have some issues in some higher end games. It is a good card, don't get me wrong, but the fact is its main selling point is it doesn't require external power, and for systems like this, those are really the only cards you can go with unless you want to be a little bit risky and get a SATA to 6 pin adapter and run something else I wouldn't really advise that like we recommended at the beginning of this video with only a 200 something watt power supply so do keep that in mind but I mean the 1650 still can play games like Overwatch which ran well over 100 plus FPS Overwatch is a great example of games like CSGO Valorant and well Fortnite which we also tested but we'll talk about that in a minute where you can run this at well over 100 plus FPS on high settings because the 1650 is more than enough to push it and the i7 6700 being a four core eight threaded CPU while being it is an older four core eight threaded CPU. Uh, it definitely can run anything you throw at it nowadays. Just look at the 3100 and 3300X. Those two CPUs with their higher clock speeds can run pretty much any game still nowadays without any problem. Now let's talk about Fortnite, everyone's favorite game. A little bit of sarcasm there, but Fortnite on pro settings 1080p was getting well over 100 plus FPS. You could ideally throw a 144 hertz monitor at this PC and have a pretty awesome gaming experience on a game like Fortnite or Valorant or any other esports title. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep that in mind because this configuration for $450 is not half bad. And lastly, we decided to test Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which basically made the 1650 weep a little bit. On medium settings, we did average below 60 FPS on the built-in benchmark tool, which was kind of to be expected. This is the kind of situation where you're probably going to have to play games on like medium low settings to get 60 FPS. Uh, AAA titles are going to be way more demanding on this PC, and the 1650 is probably going to be the bottleneck in most situations. So at this point, you're going to start seeing some of the compromises of this build, but again, 400 $50 for this whole PC. You really cannot complain about these numbers if you have to run on medium lowish settings for higher end games and then being able to go back to esports titles and crank out 100 plus FPS. Now I know most of you are going to be asking $450. You've built PCs for $450. Why don't you just recommend that? Well, mainly because availability. The main reason we did this video was we saw this PC for $300, let alone the fact that availability of PC parts right now are really bad. $300 for this Optiplex is actually a really good deal. So be sure to check the link in the description down below to see if there's an updated listing for this PC because that is a really good price regardless for this PC. So how about we go ahead and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So one of the best parts about this PC was the fact that we were able to literally unbox it, throw a graphics card in within about five minutes of having it, and we were already up in gaming. So that's one of the best parts about buying one of these pre-builds and then upgrading it is the fact that you're spending barely any money on it, it feels like compared to building your own PC even, especially right now because it is really hard to get stuff. So having to only buy a PC used off of eBay and then a graphics card makes it a lot easier and much less of a headache than trying to part out a whole entire PC.
And of course, you could part out a whole entire PC for around $450 and get upgrade pad, that sort of deal. We'll link a video in the eye in the top right corner if you wanna check that video out. Uh, but that PC is gonna be hard to find right now. And if for some reason you're watching this in the future and it's more available, then go for it. That'd be a good option for you. But for those who just want a simple solution where you can just plop a graphics card in, as Jackson mentioned, maybe upgrade the storage, add an SSD, which I highly suggest you do, and have a really awesome little gaming tower for next to nothing, I mean, it's a really good option to consider. So in every game that we ran, we actually managed to get like 60 FPS plus, like even in Warzone, high settings with the really big team battle where it's like 50 on 50, we were getting over 60 FPS and it was fully playable. So like Matt was saying, for 450 bucks, I mean, you really can't do much better right now for it. So if you are interested in picking up this computer or this graphics card or anything in this video, links in the description down below. They are affiliate links. If you do purchase using those links, they do help us out. Keep in mind, we will be posting a listing to the seller we bought this from. They may not be in stock, but if they aren't in stock, we'll add an updated link for just a general search so you can try to find more of these. I assume they'll probably be around the same price, but anyways, links in the description down below. Also, don't forget to check out other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.